doing well so far. We've covered linking controls, we've covered how expressions work, and now we've covered variables. Now here we are and we're ready to get working with some dimensions. As you know, opacity so far, all the properties that we've been working with, specifically opacity and rotation, all have one dimension. There's only one number. Opacity is only 100. Rotation is only 90 degrees. But what of something like position? In position, we have two values, x and y. So we need to be able to address each of these dimensions either individually or together. And that's not as straightforward as when you're working with opacity and rotation. So let me alt click position here and I'm going to do what we've been doing all this time, which is value minus 200. So my expected result is that this layer is going to move up by 200 pixels. And when I click away, it's actually going to move left by 200 pixels. And that's because minus 200 in the X axis will actually move it left. So that means my 200 is only applying on the X axis, but it's not applying to the Y axis. So how are we going to address these individual dimensions? This is where arrays come in. An array is like a number that has multiple dimensions. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't know what you expected there. Um, so let me do what we did before by defining an array here. So to do that, we use square brackets. So I'm going to add the first square bracket. I'm going to write 100, add a comma, and then I'm going to do 250. And then I'm going to close the square brackets. And now we have an array. So naturally, the 100 is going to apply to X and the 250 is going to apply to Y. And since we don't have transformed or position or value being referenced here, uh, these two values are going to be used and the keyframes are going to be ignored. So let me click away and you'll see now the layer has moved to 100, 250. So if I move my time, you'll see the opacity still happens, but now the position keyframes are being ignored. So in order to move my layer up by 200 pixels, I'm going to do value minus add a square bracket. We don't want to affect X, so we're going to leave zero there. And then in the Y, we're going to put in that 200 and then close the square bracket. And then when I click away, you'll see now the layer has moved up from its original position. And now the entire animation is happening 200 pixels higher than it usually would. Remember, the, min the, the values that we're applying will not affect the keyframes individually. They'll not affect, um, they'll not change over time. It'll just be that specific value. So the first keyframe is going to have 200 subtracted from it. And the last keyframe is going to have 200 subtracted from it. And everything in between is going to work uh, as you expect. So we've just learned how to define our own arrays. And this works just like uh, before when we learned how to use variables, we can actually put variables inside an array. So we can say subtractor equals to 200. We can say subtractor y equals to 200. Subtractor x equals to zero. And then we'll go value, value minus. Uh, we'll make the array with a square bracket subtractor x comma subtractor y close the square brackets and we're good to go so like, the exact same thing is going to happen except this time we now have the two values outside this array and that makes it a lot easier to change so let's do here 100 and now it'll do 100 remember you need to add these uh, colons at the end of every line in order to avoid errors so that it knows that uh, your line is over uh, without them, it still works, but it's very good practice to actually have them at the end of every line just to avoid any possible error. And when you get into Java, JavaScript and programming and stuff, you'll actually learn that your program can crash simply because you don't have this uh, colon at the end. And uh, After Effects is very forgiving. They actually disabled that for the sake of expressions just to get them working properly. Cool. So that just happened. Um, Let's take a look at the other side of arrays. Currently, we've been defining arrays ourselves, doing the uh, X and Y on our own, but how do we pick out the X and Y from a particular property? So I'll grab the expression text again, I'll press S for scale, uh, hold down Shift and press P to show the position as well. I can expand this just to show the expression that we had before. So now, here's a very interesting thing I want to do. 
I'm going to disable the expression actually, and I want the scales x value to all. Uh, sorry, I want the scale to be always equal to the x value of position. So in order to do this, let's alt click the stopwatch of scale. We're gonna get transform scale as we're used to, which is also the same as simply saying value. And I'm going to pick whip the position, just the position for now. So once I let go, you'll see that it's going to say transform dot position. Remember, we're currently in scale, so it's still going to work. Uh, click away and you'll see now the two values are now copying over, the 540 and the 590 in the X and Y respectively. So what if I only want, I want both dimensions of scale to tie to the X value of position only. Now the pick whip is also equipped to the capability of picking out uh, individual dimensions. So before we were picking the position here, but you can actually drag it to the particular uh, property that you want to tie to. So I want to tie to this one. I'm going to select it and let go. And something interesting has happened here. After Effects has created a new variable called temp and that's gone and uh, been defined as transform.position and there's a zero at the end here in square brackets and then we have the array temp temp being defined. So basically it's saying that whatever temp is applied to both x and y. But if you, you can recall that these are actually two values so that so we can't have two values inside here and two values inside here. It has to be one at a time. So that is where this little zero guy is coming in. Now, computer people, please explain to me why you count things from zero. So what happens inside an array is that um, you have the first dimension of an array is number zero, the second dimension is one, and the third dimension is two. So in this case, where we had, um, let's say 100 by 250. Um, this 100 here is index zero, as in it's the zero with thingy inside the array. And then number two, which is the 250, has uh, is number one. So let's go back to this sort of thing here. Remember we have here zero, so zero is actually referring to the X. And if we wanted it to refer to the Y, we can just pick whip this and you'll see that zero changes to a one. If we were to make this layer 3D and we do the same to Z, you'll see that now we have transform position is going to two, which is the third one. And we also have an array here with three dimensions, all of which are now saying um, this 540, which is the X. Sorry, it's actually gonna be zero because that's uh, the Z. So let's change this to one and you'll see it's now 590 changes to zero and it's now 540. So that's how you go about picking the individual segments of an array. All right, so that's how arrays work. You can actually create them yourself by adding square brackets and then putting your values in inside, making sure that these square brackets have the same number of values inside as the number of dimensions of the property that you're setting up. So since we have scale here and it's 3D, X, Y, and Z, we have to have temp happening three times, so temp, temp, temp. Um, or just as before, we can set specific values, so 100, 200, 100, and that's going to do 100, 200, 100. Just like that, pretty straightforward. When we refer to the values, we simply do uh, the usual that we used to, transform.position, uh, which could just as well be value. And then we add square brackets at the end saying only refer to this specific part of the array. So zero means we'll only get the 100. Uh, one will mean we'll get the 200. And two will get us this other 100 at the end. So it's important to remember this, especially when referencing things together. But for now, that's pretty interesting. Go ahead and test it out. Try it in different dimensions. Try it in different properties. Uh, you can go to the uh, effect uh, you can add like a fill effect to, to your layer, see how you can set up that array to define the colors, see how it works. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be pretty fun, actually. And um, yeah, that's how that's the basics of the expressions. We've covered variables, arrays, linking controls, how expressions works. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at examples of different expressions that you can use and different functions you can use inside expressions built in by the After Effects team. So for now, go ahead and do those tests and I'll see you in the next video.